I'll be showcasing the Covet remaster by comparing it side by side with the old one. I'll also be taking the MR Turbo Rally and Race cars and putting them through their paces. As for front wheel drive, I'll be taking the new runner config around Tokyo's famous C1 Expressway. The cars being compared are the Rally and GTZ versions, though the special edition was missing despite the parts being there for it. It is somewhat disappointing to see the removal of painted side views and door handles. Other missing style options are the carbon tailgate and the old cut bumper. The textures and new configs are great though. So I actually think this handles really well for a MR rally car. It handles bumps and rough terrain way better than the Bolide rally car does. That said, it can have a hefty amount of turbo lag at times. And sometimes the suspension acts a little bit weird. Lands very nicely, but sometimes the rear lets go in turns even after the turbo has stabilized. Brakes actually feel pretty good on this. I think lengthening first gear so you can tighten the other gears would also really help out. Really setting up wide to carry lots of speed and not get launched off the road. Try to float it over the bumps, keep it nice and tidy, really keep my average speed high. Trying desperately to limit wheel spin even with the aggressive turbo lag, and that's a 46.6, quite fast. Next up, we have the race car, which I have a less than glowing review of because the brake bias is 4% more forward than the rally car for some reason. This means that it's incredibly easy to lock up the fronts and you get constant one wheel lockups when trail braking, as you saw there, and you will see many other times. Other than that, the massive turbo lag is actually surprisingly manageable if you're used to any other car with a really beefy turbo. It does have a bit of a tendency to let go of the rear at high speeds, though. especially easy to lock up one wheel because you're in the middle of the transition. This next braking zone is extra spicy. It's strange, I don't know why it's so forward bias tuned. It does feel weirdly common for performance cars in BMG to be tuned with dangerous bias, <laughs> either too forward or backward. But when reviewing the cars, I try to keep the default tune. Here you have to be real careful. Again, it's, it's a little loose at high speeds. I set up my braking line towards the outside of the pavement here, so I have a wider radius through the corner to carry more speed. It always feels great when you get this lined up last second and hit your apex and track out to that tiny strip of runoff past the curb. Through this high speed corner, you get to see the looseness bite me despite turning about as hard as I would in most cars. I never feel completely comfortable taking this chicane, because I'm so used to the other chicane. Coming up on the final corner, we're doing pretty good on lap time despite all of the troubles I've been having with the looseness and braking. Still, you could lower the lap time greatly if you improve the brake tune, or even just run arcade ABS. You can pause here to see how it fares against the other race cars in Beam and G. Next up we have the runner config. It's not a covet pre-runner, though it would be kind of neat. The description calls it a nimble weapon for Japan's expressways. But does it live up to that? A little bit of a spoiler. It's nice. It feels good. brakes feel great, the rear of the car doesn't get loose even at high speeds. As you can see, still figuring out the speeds relative to the gearing for this car. Uh, the nitrous is nice, although it doesn't quite make it through the whole C1. I do have a little bit of an advantage with the nav map, even if it doesn't show the road. Because I can 
still see if there's traffic coming up. Here we get to see some uh, lovely lane changes without indicators. I'm always slightly uncertain if I should go for the right or the left side here. Though with traffic, you should aim for the one that doesn't have traffic in it. Quickly coming up on one of the hardest braking zones in the run. It's best to use a shoulder here so you can really extend your line through this corner rather than getting stuck having to track out inside that barrier. It's always a good idea to have awareness of on ramps and off ramps so you have more routes around traffic when need be. There's a lot of mental math going on to try and optimize these racing lines when they're forced shallow by traffic. There I lift just a little bit cautiously because sometimes traffic moves at different rates and they end up closing a gap you thought was going to be there by the time you end up there. I carry more speed than normal for the shallow line because I know the banking will catch me here. I end up having to scrub off more speed here because I get unlucky and I can't get to the wall before the car closes the gap. I just barely reach the corner in time to apex past the traffic car here. Tunnels are always a little bit scarier because you have so many more blind spots to deal with. Even the nav map isn't much help when you can't see through the turn at all, because there's a big wall in the way. The tunnels especially have a lot of sweeping bends that aren't quite corners and aren't quite straights, so if you need to hold a specific lane, you might suddenly end up with a braking line you didn't know you needed. Now, as you'll see coming up, there is just enough room. Bye-bye side view. You know things are close when a side view mirror ends up flying. of sweeping bends that are effectively straights might not be if you need to stick to one lane, so it's always good to widen your corners. This will give you the spare grip to navigate around traffic without having to slow down. The N2O is long gone, but it still accelerates pretty well despite that. shooting the gaps. I didn't see it in this run, but sometimes the AI is so bad about lane changes that they'll smack into another AI car in a different way. So watch out for that. Maybe a little more cautious through these S's than I need to be because there's so much traffic around. Sometimes if you alter your line to something you're not used to, you might find banking you aren't sure of and then you end up in a wall. Couldn't want to crash right before the final turn, of course. And then I almost crash in the final turn anyways because I apex a bit too early. <laughs> but that's a good example of how well-tuned this car is. I've done a full lap by now, but I go on just a little further until I find a nice shoulder to park on. That's the exact same spot I got traffic 
in this tunnel last time. To send things off, I'm going to be leaving you with some rally outtakes, as well as opening and closing doors, hoods, and hatches. Thanks for watching, and I hope you enjoy the update.